If you are a fan of The Office like me, paint like Pam, and I'm gonna show you how to do this step-by-step -step watercolor Dunder Mifflin architecture watercolor painting. That was a mouthful. I'm not gonna say this is for beginners, but I'm gonna try my best to break it down into very simple steps. If drawing a building makes you nervous, you always have the option of printing out a photograph, tracing it onto your watercolor paper, and then filling in with paint following along with me. Shout out to the Office Ladies Podcast for giving me this idea for this tutorial. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an art tutorial. An optional first step is to tape your watercolor paper. And this makes a really satisfying white edge all the way around. Start with a pencil to lightly sketch your composition. If you're like me, sketching architecture might be a little bit intimidating. So this is your basic two-point perspective. So we're going to start with the center of the building using a ruler and try to keep your line parallel to the edge of your paper. And if you're interested in learning all the ins and outs of two-point perspective, I do have a tutorial and I will link that above. I highly recommend using a ruler and the concept behind two-point perspective is that both lines on the left side of your corner of the building go towards a vanishing point on the left and then both sides on the right side go to a vanishing point on the right. I'm not going to make this complicated, so just follow along with me and draw a diagonal line going down and then a diagonal line going slightly up based on which side of the building you are doing. So it doesn't have to be perfect perspective. Pam certainly did not sit there and measure the building exactly. And in fact, as I'll mention later, obviously Pam didn't even paint this because she doesn't exist. So keep in mind that this is a really great painting to learn from because it has a really nice color quality to it. It's nice because it's just one building, but it's not overly complicated, which makes it a great subject for a watercolor painting. I'm just using my pencil to map in lightly the details and with the building all lines need to go to this vanishing point. If I were more devoted, maybe I would extend my paper, find the vanishing point and make sure every line is accurate. But that's not the spirit of this painting. So as I paint, I do have an image of this building pulled up and this is a very famous painting if you're an office fan. So if you Google it, there's tons of images. Obviously NBC owns it and keep in mind this is a painting. So if you just want to like own a poster, go to the NBC website and buy it. So don't be too hard on yourself if the building is a little bit taller, a little bit skinnier. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a fun way to create fan art. That's what this is for me. I'm a teacher in 2020. I've been making tutorials for my students for months and I just wanted to do something fun. So thanks Jenna Fisher, thanks Angela Kinsey for the great idea for doing a tutorial for a Dunder Mifflin building. You could certainly copy Pam's painting as closely as possible and make it super traditional to her style. Or you could draw Michael on top of the building about to jump with the bouncy castle behind him. You could put the Ferris wheel that him and Holly rode on. You could make this any direction of fan art that you would like. But if you're looking for just a basic watercolor tutorial with a little bit of perspective drawing, which I know if you're really good at perspective drawing or you're really into straight lines and edges, you are questioning and judging my windows. But whatever, this is for fun. I'm not gonna get caught up in the nitty gritty. I'm drawing my trees now, which is what I'm way more comfortable with. And I always loved the trees on the side and the shadows that it created. It was like a really nice way to balance the architecture of the building with the nature and organic shape of the trees. Now it's time for the fun part. You earned it, it's time to paint. A wash is a large area of usually one flat color with lots of water. I think the sky is the easiest place to start because it's just gonna be blue and white. It's a simple way to paint, it's really satisfying. So fill your sky with water, avoiding the edges of the bushes and the building. Then you are going to take your blue paint, whichever blue you prefer, and you are going to dab it into the water. You will notice that it billows up in the pockets of water that you added, but you do have to kind of encourage it to travel with your paintbrush. There's no wrong way to paint your sky. It's really easy, it's really fun. You could even go crazy and do like a galaxy or space themed office painting. This is just me closely representing the painting that Pam did. 
So I'm using my paintbrush and I'm just spreading it out, paying attention to leaving some areas white to represent clouds. Then with my paper towel or a tissue, I'm blotting the paint that I added to give it this more dimensional cloud-like texture. You'll notice watercolor dries really lightly, so it's all about the layering. The areas that you want to be darker, go back in and add some water and paint on your brush to darken those areas. Don't be scared of adding more paint than you think. It's going to dry way lighter than it looks right now. Develop your sky as much as you would like, layering, and feel free to experiment with different times of day. Maybe this is a sunrise at Dunder Mifflin or a sunset, or follow along with me and just keep a really simple blue and white sky. Now that I feel confident and happy that I have some paint on my paper, it's time to apply a wash to the building itself. I'm going to start with the same blue I used in the sky, and I'm using the same brush for now. Something I see young artists or beginners do is try and keep everything separate. So I'm using the same color in the building that I used in the sky. They're in the same space, they're in the same atmosphere, and so painting the building brown and the sky blue is a mistake. You wanna create unity by using color schemes that work together. I'm thinking of this blue as like a really light gray and the right hand side of the building is painted darker. So that's where the shadow would be. And yes, I'm thinking about Dwight Schrute's critique that this painting was not realistic because it had multiple suns. Um, so I'm gonna try and tune that criticism out. I noticed in Pam's painting that her gray was a very kind of purple violet. So in my container here, I'm mixing ultramarine blue and a lizard and crimson. And you can see it's making a pretty neutral kind of gray color. I'm going to use the more red warm tone of that in that front stoop in front of the building. And I'm also going to put a little bit in Michael's car. And you can see at the bottom of the painting, if you're looking at a reference image, there's a lot more warmth down at the bottom. So I'm adding that now. So the key here is not to make the building look purple, and I'm switching paint brushes to my flat brush. That's really good for straight lines and edges. I've added just a hint of burnt umber, which is the dark brown color, and this will kind of gray everything out and make it a neutral grayish, and it does have a hint of violet to it, but a little more gray. So you can see this flat brush is making a nice line against the sky, and this will help distinguish what the background is, which is the sky, and then the geometric straight lines of the building. I do want to make this right hand side a little bit darker, so I'm experimenting with mixing that brown with my ultramarine blue and a little bit of a lizard and crimson. I want it gray, but I definitely want to have that nice violet tone that Pam used. Remember, this stage is all about just filling in light washes of color. Detail work comes later. I think a lot of people are scared to use watercolor because it doesn't look great right away, or at least not with a layered painting. So adding layers, being patient, trusting yourself are really important parts of learning how to use watercolor paint. For this section of the building, I'm using a very light wash of yellow ochre. If you don't have a palette like mine with earth colors, you can mix yellow with a little bit of brown and that should get that really gray, light, beigey color. So right now I'm trying to make the right hand side just a little bit darker. I really do like that warm kind of yellow brownish tone underneath on the bottom of the painting. I think that's an important area and I'm repeating it on the right side. So if you don't have the palette that I do, you can make all of these colors reflect or look like the colors Pam did. You definitely want to have brown in your palette because you can add that to tone down a lot of the colors that you might not have. This doorway is really important because it's one of the darkest, if not the darkest areas in the painting. So it kind of brings you right in the doors of Dunder Mifflin. So I'm doing the same color I did before, but I'm adding it darker. So for me, I did my ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and my burnt umber. That's my go-to neutral color. If you have black in your palette, you can use that, but I always like to mix this color because it has a little bit more nuance than just black. One of the best things about this painting is the slight reflection of the sky in the windows. It's a very charming, kind of positive vibe in the painting. And so I'm using a smaller round brush to just kind of tap in some of that ultramarine blue so it looks like the windows are reflecting the beautiful Scranton sky. And now I'm applying water, just like I did to the sky, to get that super important Dunder Mifflin parking lot. So many important things happened in this parking lot, from Michael about to jump off the roof, 
to, Meredith getting hit by a car, and Pam handled the parking lot by doing a wash with a mixture of that ultramarine blue from the sky and that same burnt umber that we're using. This is really not so much beginner painting if you're drawing it, but the colors are super simple and most of them are earth colors. So it makes a really nice kind of asphalt looking light gray. I'm using this yellow green to map in the bushes. And I'm not gonna worry about areas of dark and light. I just wanna get the green on my palette. And I'm doing the same thing in the trees on the side of the building. So with your green, whichever green you have in your palette, just kind of map in those large organic shapes. And don't be nervous if they kind of blend into other areas. That's the beauty of watercolor is the paint travels and interacts, making it have lots of unity. I'm using the point of my small round brush to map in some of that brown for the tree trunks. And I can't forget Pam's blue Toyota Yaris. And so I'm using this lighter blue next to the ultramarine to give it just kind of a blob of blue that I'll add detail to later. Now it's time to let this dry so I can get more detail in the second layer. Now that you have a first layer of watercolor paint, your details are going to get darker and you can layer more paint to make it look real. I'm gonna pay close attention to this dark doorway of Dunder Mifflin. If you wanna just use black, that's okay. But I like to mix my own ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a little bit sometimes of alizarin crimson if I want it to have a little bit more of a violet tone. I'm also going to pay more attention to the dark and light areas in the trees. So I'm using that same green I used before. I'm going to mix in a little bit of my brown to make it dark. You can also mix some blue in there so it has a nice cool tone to it. So if you're looking at a reference image, you can see Pam almost did, well, not almost, she kind of did some outlining on the edges of her trees, which is why I think this painting is so charming because it's very thoughtful, it definitely shows skill, but also has some like elements to it that you would maybe want to avoid, like dark outlines on things. But I'm gonna paint, paint this in Pam's honor and try and reflect her style in my own work. And yes, I know she's a fictional character. This is just for fun. So I'm looking at my reference image and I'm just darkening with that dark green that I created and trying to pay attention to the light and dark areas. The shrubs on either side kind of anchor the painting and it's this nice like dark area on either side. I'm also going to soften the sky a little bit with, a, um, with that big round brush and this time, I want my building to stand out. So having my sky really nice and blue and that crisp line of where the building meets the sky is gonna be very important. Because they share so many of the same colors, there's gonna be unity. But I definitely want it to look like the building is popping forward. You'll see me work on that concept quite a bit. I know it looks scary like I'm making the sky dark and stormy, and I'm using my flat brush here to really emphasize the straight lines of the building. Remember, watercolor is going to dry much lighter than it looks right now. Continue working until you're happy with your sky. Using your water, your flat brush, a round brush too, and a paper towel to get the effect that you want. I'm not stressing out about how my sky is blending into my building because Pam kind of outlines things, which again we talked about being not exactly the technique you would want to use, but it does provide a really nice contrast of geometric straight lines and then like the organic shapes with the clouds and the trees. Because I made my sky darker, I also want to add a little bit more of that blue in the window, that nice optimistic reflection of a beautiful Scranton, Pennsylvania day. So basically everything I did before, I'm doing a second layer. So I'm mixing up that nice yellowish brown, and now that it has a wash of its base color, I'm going in with a darker textured layer. So Pam created a nice texture that looks like stone, or something concrete that has a different texture than the more gray parts of the building. Notice her car totally like blobbed into the building, but I know how watercolor works. I'm just gonna layer on top of that again. Um, fun fact, I drive a Toyota Yaris, so I've always related to Pam. We've always had so many overlaps, including the car that we drive. Mine is a newer model though. Use black or mix up a neutral gray like I did and pay attention to the really dark lines that Pam created. So there's a really nice shadow on the right hand side of the building. I think it's one of the nicest parts of this painting. And I'm using this to kind of emphasize that sidewalk area where Pam stood and uh, Dwight ran laps around the building and she pretended to time it with a thermometer. And so just look in your reference image for the darkest areas. Underline the building, 
parts of the asphalt, definitely the right hand side are some lovely shadows that we're going to get to. So you are now paying attention to the dark areas and the shadows to really start to pop on the second layer of color. One of my favorite areas of this painting is that little flash of ultramarine blue in the front. It's a very thoughtful brush stroke and it kind of brings the, the painting to the front, giving this landscape just a touch of depth that I think is really nice. Now I'm taking my detail brush and I'm gonna go back in with that neutral gray I created. And again, you can just use black. And I'm trying to really darken by layering those areas on the right hand side and all the dark areas I've done before, just putting like a third and fourth coat on it. This is going to make the painting have more depth and have just like nice crisp edges. I am gonna go back and do some outlining with a pen. So I'm doing some with the small brush. I'm gonna do some with the pen. And then I'm gonna go back and kind of make them look natural by doing more watercolor on the pen marks. So one interesting fact I learned on the Office Ladies podcast this week is that this is not a painting. I mean, obviously Pam didn't paint it. No offense, Jenna Fisher. But this was a photograph that they manipulated digitally to look like a watercolor painting. So knowing that actually makes me feel a little less tied to making it look like a watercolor painting um, because I know it's not. It definitely looks like one, but some of the line work at the end, I question, you know, how well would I be able to do that with a fine brush? Um, Pam might just be really talented at that, or it might be part of the digital manipulation. So that's why I'm gonna kinda do a balance of both. That's one of my favorite ways to create art is watercolor illustration with pen on top. So I've always really responded to this painting because it is kind of in my wheelhouse. You will see me layering this doorway a lot because it's an important part of the painting. Not only visually because of all the dark areas, but just the symbolism of the painting. The doorway, the entryway to Dunder Mifflin and the daily lives that the office cast created. I've procrastinated long enough and I need to add some dark areas to the car. I'd be lying if I said that didn't make me nervous. It's one thing to paint a shrub, it's another to paint a Sebring or to paint a Toyota Yaris. So I'm just very lightly mapping in where the tires would be and the windows, and this is gonna make the cars look not perfect, but more dynamic and more realistic. There's still a long way to go. Once you're satisfied with your detail work and your dark areas, it's time to let dry and grab your ruler. When you add your pen marks, your paper needs to be completely dry. So be patient, use a hair dryer, but trying to use a pen on top of wet paint, trust me, doesn't work. This step is both very satisfying and very terrifying because a permanent marker is permanent. And so I'm using my ruler to go back in and emphasize the lines I created during my drawing stage. But as I said, um, my brain and math don't always get along. And I'm hating on myself right now because my lines aren't straight. If I were a more devoted artist, perhaps I would have taken the time to make sure my perspective was completely accurate. But you know what? That's not really the spirit of this painting. One of the lovely things about this work of art is it completely looks like the Dunder Mifflin uh, building. But also, it has mistakes. It has simplifications. It has human error. And that's kind of the beauty of this painting. I think that's why I always responded to it. It showed that Pam had artistic sensibilities, that she was sensitive, that she was nostalgic and thoughtful, but it also kind of had the vibe of like a middle school art project. So it was like kind of trying to combine these two ideas. And I can so relate to that, especially being an art teacher. It's like, sometimes I wonder if my personal art is good enough. And so that feeling Pam had at the art show, I just thought it was super relatable for anyone who's in the art world of putting yourself out there and accepting all of your mistakes along with your beauty. So that's the vibe I have always gotten from this painting. And so I'm going to let it go and I'm not going to be mad at myself if I draw a line incorrectly. It's going to look a little bit awkward right now because it is pen on top of watercolor. I am going to go back and add some more watercolor to create some detail areas and also just to soften those straight lines. I wanna find a nice balance of straight geometric lines and also nice organic, loose shapes. I'm also committing more to details in the windows. So if you look at a reference image that you can find, and if you Google this image, there's tons of them. You can see how many windows there are. You can see how many like lines are in the building, how the windows have crosses in them. 
and I'm like, why didn't I use my ruler? I try to go back and fix it, but it's not exactly perfect. But you heard my speech on that, that's okay. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if your focus for this is having fun and painting and reflecting on the office, you know, you could trace it. It doesn't have to be completely perfectly drawn. If you want the challenge of hand drawing this and painting it, follow along with me at the beginning of the video. It's really whatever goals you have set for yourself. I do recommend using your ruler. That will make your lines, of course, look more straight and add as much detail as you feel like. If you don't want to add as much detail as Pam did, totally fine. This is also a great tool to use to go back and emphasize some of the lines and details in your trees and shrubs. Look closely at her painting. It definitely looks outlined, although it, the illusion that it was done with a brush is stronger than pen, but I thought adding a pen to all sections would be a really satisfying way to learn how to paint and do this kind of illustrative style. It's time to add a little bit more detail to the cars, and I feel like I can kind of map in the specific dark areas of the tires and the windows using this Sharpie. You can use any black pen that you have. I do like a Sharpie with a fine point because it doesn't bleed when you add water to it, but any number of drawing pens would do the trick. Now that I have my pen mapped out, I'm going back in with my neutral gray and I'm adding even more details than I have before. So look at your reference image and find the areas of dark, find the areas of light. Remember to darken everything on the right side because one of the many suns that Dwight pointed out is shining on the front side of the building. So I'm just going back in and playing around with color, keeping it very simple, keeping it pretty neutral. This is a gray Pennsylvania building, nothing too exciting, and just putting a second layer on areas that I want to make stand out or have richer color. dark areas and that shadows of the trees over to the right is one of my favorite parts of this painting. So I'm just going in looking for those areas before I call this thing done. Stay true to Pam's style. I'm going to take my fine tip brush and try to go over some of those Sharpie lines to create a fine point with a little bit more of a wavy watercolor brush vibe. So you can see that it's a very different line than the Sharpie and that's okay. Anything that you want to blend out, once you add it, you just add more water to it. So if it's too dark, if it's the wrong line, go back and rework it with a little bit of water on your brush. This is just the stage where you're being super picky, super obsessive with your details until you really feel like you've captured the essence of Dunder Mifflin in your style. soften some of those lines and make them look more like shapes. I'm going back in with my trusty flat brush, adding a little bit of water and just pulling them down into each section. The lines are still there, they're still bold, but it just softened things up a little bit. Step is taking my flat brush and making sure there's a clean line between my sky and my building. So it shouldn't look like a line. I'm using my flat brush to put that blue back in there and then going back with my round brush to get the color to flow into the sky and away from the building. This is just like a final touch to make the painting a little crisp. There's a lot of unity and color, but I do want the building to come forward and stand out from the sky. Okay, I think I'm done. I've let this painting dry for a little bit and now I'm removing the tape, which is so stinking satisfying. Look at that clean edge. So again, this step was optional, but look how nice it looks peeling the tape back. It almost looks framed before it's even done. To make my painting have a consistent edge, I just laid a piece of tape down and then cut the edge so it's even. Well, there she is, painting like Pam, Dunder Mifflin watercolor painting. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more watercolor tutorials, check these out.